Hello and welcome to part two in our save point system series. In this episode, we're going to add in the ability for us to name our save files and then enter the game through one of these slots. So join us right now as we get started with this. So when we made our save slot option, uh, we've got a button covering the whole entire thing. We're going to make it so that when we click the button, it's going to bring up a little dialog box where you can type in the name for the save game object if it is a new save file. So let's create that dialog box first of all. I'm going to go to user interface here, add the widget blueprint, and we'll call this one uh, dialog box underscore new save. And in here, I'm going to make the camera panel here have a background blur. And that's going to be anchored to the whole page here, so 0000. zero, zero, zero plus. And we're going to go down and change the blur strength here to like 5. Yeah. Um, also going to make the background look a bit darker too. So let's put a border in it. And put that in the background blur. But this will have a dark and be see-through 5. So it's blurry and dark in the background. Uh, next we're going to make our little window appear above the whole entire thing. But actually, I might make the border a little bit less than that. We'll make it 0 0.2. There we go. Uh, so now we're going to put a little window here in the center of the screen. So we're going to put in another border here into the canvas panel. This one will be centered into the uh, middle of the canvas panel. So anchor to the middle and aligned 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And we'll change the position here to 0, 0. And then just change the size accordingly. So size here, I'll increase to like say 500, and size Y we'll do as 300. Okay, and this border is going to have a black background like that. We're then going to have an instruction for the player at the top here saying like enter new save data. Um, so in the border, we're going to put in a vertical box. And in that vertical box, we'll have a uh, text. And in here, we'll just call it, actually, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll also wrap it that with another border. We've got like a little white heading bar at the top. And this text here, I'll make black. Just for a stylistic thing, nothing reason like that. And this text here will give the instructions to the player. Uh, enter name of save file and we'll give it a bit of padding here like five there you go and looks a bit better already then I want to use an editable text field so the place where the player can enter their, their own custom text here so I'm just going to drag in editable text I'm not editable text so a text box here um, into the vertical box. There it is. And I'll make that centered in the vertical alignment and choose fill. I'll put it in the middle there. And we're going to add some padding as well to this on the left. Put in uh, 50. And on the right, we'll put 50. And in here, we'll put in the hint text saying enter save name here. Okay, so the player clicks on that and types away what they want. Um, and here you can choose like the images and, and design of it if you want. Um, we're going to leave it like this for now. It'd be fine, I think. Um, yeah, I think that'd be okay. In fact, we'll actually, we'll make it a center aligned at least. There you go. Okay, and I think that'll do. We'll get some extra padding, I guess, in the middle. Put like 50 in. This makes it a bit bigger, and we'll give the font a little bit bigger too. We'll do like 18. Okay, so enter save name file, they'll click on this and type away what they want. Now when this box does come up, we do also want to tell it to show the mouse cursor so the player can choose things. No. So now we want the edible text box to be named properly. So we'll say this one as uh, 
dialog uh, text box and in here uh, font family I've just seen it's gone weird so we just change that to the Roboto fix that um, there we go right so now this dialog text box thing this editable text box has some functions on it if you go down here you'll see text change and text committed so text committed happens when you push enter after you've entered it and text changed is just as you're changing the text so we will mostly want the text committed and hit this and the first thing it's going to do is it's going to take the name of the file that we've got the text that we've got here and we're going to send that over to our save game object now our save game object is actually our game save data on our game instance so let's take a look at this it is this save game data here so we need to get a hold of that reference so let's go into our uh, dialog box here to get the game instance and from there cast to our save game instance I've called it save game instance because that's the name of the tutorial um, and then from here we need to get the as save game data or game save data rather now from here we can save a slot to its various slot names so I can do slots and we can now add a unique slot to this this save slot will be this text here so we're going to drag that across put that in a little reroute in there to keep it tidier like so so once we committed it the text will go through and be placed on the say on the game instance save game data uh we then want to tell it to um go into a uh close in this window and changing the save game slot to that title so let's close this window remove from parent and we need to know what slot we clicked on when we did this so I'm going to go to the variables and add new variable and this will be save slot option and the variable type for this will be a save slot option variable widget reference and this will be exposed on spawn so editable and exposed on spawn in that way i can then set that when i actually spawn this widget box so with that reference i'm going to drag that out and from there i can set on there the name of the save file here create new save file i can change this text here so you're looking for a save slot name save slot name and we're going to from there set text And that text is going to be this text. Just like that. Okay. And that will go through to that. So we'll remove this thing from uh, the parent and we will send over our text to it. In fact, I should really put this at the end for. Um, understanding sakes so there we go it's setting the text over to the option so now it's correct and, and assigned to it Hit compile and remove from parent screen let's go back to our save slot option and set it up so that when we click on this it is going to um, load up our save game file or load up our dialog box so we click on the button and we're going to name this one so uh, slot button and we're going to go down to its clicked event and when it's clicked we need to know but first of all whether or not it is empty or not so on the variables we're going to add a new variable and this will be for the save slot that we want to load up this will be the save slot string uh, save slot string and that'd be a string reference and we're going to see if this is actually set to anything so we get slot string and we'll see if it's equal to nothing if it's equal to nothing that means it's a brand new one and we want to tell it to 
uh, load up our dialog options. So we go to true, we create widget, and open up our dialog box new save. And we'll look for a save slot option, which would be self. We then want to add this to the viewport. The last thing you need to do is set up our game instance to be the one that's being used. Go to product settings and go into our maps and modes and set to use our custom game instance, safe game instance. Okay, so let's test this all out. Let's start game, choose a save slot, I'll choose the top one here. I can click on the name here and I put in Ryan save beta and hit enter and you can see now it my name is now set there and our next part is to click on this and it will rather than do this send us over to our save slot so let's go into back into our save slot option so we we have added the dialog box to the thing we have made it commit the new save file name to it we now need to tell it to create the save game object so we're going to go to our dialog box again and we're going to go to our save game instance reference here and call the ability to create a new save game. Okay, so when I do commit it to the thing, I need it to actually now create the save game object. Now for that, we're going to use our game instance reference that we've already got on our dialog box here to handle this. As we're adding the save game slots like this, we're now going to make it do a function instead. Let's go to our save game instance and create a new function to handle this. Create a new event. And the event is going to be um, load save game. We'll call it. And this will have one input on it, and that'd be the save slot name. And this will be what's called um, when we are committing it here. So we'll replace this in a second. But what we're doing is we're sending over the name. And we're going to use that name to check if a safe slot already exists or not. So if I go to our main menu, uh, our sorry, save game instance here, and we can drag out here and do does save game exist. Put that into a branch. If it doesn't exist. We're going to drag down here and do create save game object and choose our player save data. From here, we can now tell this to be promoted to a variable and it will call this one current save data and then finally from there we can do set slot name and the slot name we're going to store on the save game object and come from our slot name okay so there is our creating a new save game file. With that all said and done, we're then going to get our game save data and we're going to store that slot names array, uh, get save slot, sorry, and we're going to add to it this new save slot. I'll hook up to there. Now, if I were to click on this function here and make an, the same, if it doesn't really exist and load up the, that one that's existing, we're going to do up here load game from slot. And the slot name there again. And we'll cast to our game save uh, player save data sorry right? and we're going to set that to our current save data we then want to do the same thing we've got here so we're going to take this uh, from here and do set slot name and that's going to come from this again so that's now creating a new save game data. I'm going to go back to our dialog box. I'm going to replace what we've got here with that set up there. So I'm just going to get rid of this, and this, and just call the load, uh, not, not from game save data, sorry, 
from the game instance load save game and we'll plug in a save slot name so that will go ahead and create a new one i'll go across to there we then want to tell it to say send the save slot option here we're going to set slot string and we're going to set that to that string So now the save slot option has a save slot string. If I go to click on it, this will now return false, meaning that's when we're going to do our load game. So we're going to go down here and do open level by name. And this is where we put in the name of the level from the save data, as well as the options about what slot we want to go to. So for now, let's just type in the level name of the level we're going to directly. In fact, actually, we're in 427. So I can actually use the open level by um, reference. Open level by object reference. A bit easier. And we'll do the village demo. Options here will be the player start, which we'll do later on. So now hit compile and save that. So now let's go into our game. Play. I'm going to start game. Create a new save file. Name this one. Lions save hit enter and then i click on here and it'll take me to the, the map okay so there is that part done all we've got ne next to do is to make it so that we can actually save the game and choose what save slot we're going to go to based on our save objects here in the level and there we have it that's the end of episode two we've now got our save slots appearing just as we want them to be with the correct titles and then in the next episode we're going to work on making it so it doesn't take us to a fixed point it's going to take us to a point that we have saved in our save files so it's going to load up the correct save file and access the correct information so join us on the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash ryan80 where you can find that episode plus many others before anyone else for just one dollar a month i want to say a massive thank you to everyone who has been supporting me and donating on patreon for their continued support make sure you subscribe to the channel and i'll see you all next time bye everyone